Today I've got some huge stories for you. Starting with a new product you'll never believe, next-gen FSR could crush Nvidia with this new feature, and AMD just released a slew of new Ryzen CPUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, you'll never believe what AMD just announced, a brand new CPU for the AM4 platform. And no, I didn't misspeak there, it's for AMD's last gen AM4 socket, which for those who don't know, originally released all the way back in September of 2016, meaning it's been going strong for 9 years at this point, and they just launched yet another CPU that will certainly extend the lifespan even longer. It's called the Ryzen 5 5600F. And as you can see right down here, it's a 6-core, 12-thread CPU based on Zen 3. And with that older architecture, it obviously means lower clocks. So a base clock of 3 GHz and a boost of up to 4 GHz. Now, what's wild is that this is actually quite a bit lower than even the Ryzen 5 5600. You can see here that it's quite a bit lower clocks versus that, even though this is, of course, the 5600F. But the CPU itself really isn't the big news here. It's the fact that AMD has released yet another product for the AM4 platform, which means that the company will have to support it for even longer, because they obviously can't stop supporting it right after a new chip is launched. So essentially, anyone who bought into AMD's Ryzen 5000, 3000 series, or really any of those chips have it made. And let's not forget that AMD is hoping to do the same thing with their AM5 platform. Now, I'm not saying that they'll be releasing CPUs nine years from now or anything, but that they do plan to support it for at least a bit longer. But who knows, maybe in 2030, AMD will launch another Ryzen 9000 chip. At this point, AMD is essentially mocking Intel right to their face. But first, while we're waiting for GPUs to finally get to MSRP, I can't help but think that MSRP itself is way too high. Luckily, today's sponsor is here to help get you a GPU at a better price. Jawa, the only online marketplace designed from the ground up for gamers, by gamers, and it's a place where you can actually pick up GPUs at a reasonable price. Like, look at this ASRock 7600 for just $199, or this EVGA 3060 for $195, and they didn't stop at GPUs either, because Jawa offers pretty much everything you could want for your build. Whether it's CPUs, motherboards, memory, you name it, Jawa has them at a great price, and what's even even better is that they offer a trade-in program that lets you get money for your old CPU or GPU to put towards your new build. Now, if you don't want to deal with the hassle of building your own PC from scratch, not that it's hard or anything, but I get it. Jawa offers some incredible gaming PCs for every budget from artisan builders. So what are you waiting for? Check out Jawa down in the description below. And next up for today, AMD just admitted something huge about their next-gen FSR, and it could actually spell the N for NVIDIA's DLSS. During an interview with the Japanese outlet 4Gamer, AMD's Senior Director of Software Development and Head of their Rockham Project, Chris Hall, said something incredible about FSR Redstone. And at this point, I think PC Gamer is right when they call it FSR 5. What was originally thought to be just a couple new features added to FSR 4 is really turning out to be a massive change, almost like FSR 4 was more of a stepping stone to FSR Redstone. So I definitely think that we're looking at FSR 5 when it's actually announced. I mean, you can even see right here that FSR Redstone is clearly its own thing in this timeline. Either way, during that interview with AMD, he stated, quote, FSR Redstone was developed using AMD ML2 code, which is machine learning to code, a research project from Rockham. The core part of the neural rendering technology is converted into optimized compute shader code by utilizing ML2 code. This means that FSR Redstone's neural rendering core can also run on GPUs made by other companies. That's right, AMD's next-gen FSR can work on GPUs from NVIDIA and Intel, meaning we could actually see wide support for AMD's next-gen FSR, similar to what we originally saw with their earlier generations. The difference is that this time it's using machine learning-based upscaling, so it will likely be much more competitive in terms of quality. That was, of course, the big issue with the earlier versions of FSR. While it was nice to have wide support across multiple vendors, DLSS simply looked better. And 
AMD has already proven that FSR 4 looks way better than past generations. The reason this could be so bad for Nvidia is the fact that AMD is already in the PS5 and Xbox Series X, not to mention all of the new handhelds hitting the market. So game developers have a pretty big incentive to use AMD's FSR. And if it works well on Nvidia cards, they likely won't have a big reason to use the resources to support DLSS. Not only that, but in another story, users got FSR 4 working on older GPUs. If you remember not too long ago, AMD accidentally released source code for FSR 4, and some users found that they had been working on supporting Int 8, which means that they were working on potentially bringing it to older GPUs, because only RDNA 4 cards support FPA. Well, one Reddit user was actually able to compile DLL to make it work with older cards. This was done a little while back on Linux, but it required emulation, so as you can see right down here, it was a massive drop in FPS. This time though, most users are only reporting either a 6 to 7 FPS drop, meaning AMD really could bring this to older GPUs, and if they do, Nvidia could be in big trouble. And lastly for today, AMD just announced a slew of new CPUs that really came out of nowhere. I'm talking multiple series of processors, so let's just get right to it. Starting things off, we have the Ryzen 9000 Pro series of CPUs. As usual, these are for professionals, so they offer better security features, more reliability, business support, lots of features that clearly help out their business customers. And as you can see right down here, we have the Ryzen 9 Pro 9945, the Ryzen 7 Pro 9745, and the Ryzen 5 Pro 9645, with the lowest in at 6 cores and 12 threads, going all the way up to 12 cores and 24 threads. And that highest end model gets up to 5.4 gigahertz, and all of these have a TDP of 65 watts. Moving on, we have the F series of Ryzen 9000 CPUs. AMD has officially announced it. And as you would expect, given the fact that they're an F moniker CPUs, these of course do not come with integrated GPUs. So hopefully we're talking essentially around the same performance, though it actually depends on which one. I'll get to that in just a second, but at the very least a bit cheaper. As you can see right down here with the 9700F, we are looking at an 8-core, 16-thread CPU, obviously up to 5.5 gigahertz. With the 9500F, 6 cores and 12 threads up to 5 gigahertz. Now, the interesting part about this is the fact, though it does make sense given the name, as you can see, the 9700F has the exact same max clock as the 9700X. Pretty much everything is the same same except hopefully it will come at a lower price. But then when we get down to the 9500F, it actually has lower clocks to the 9600, but given the fact that obviously they called it a 9500F instead of a 9600F, that is at least understandable. Fortunately, we do not have pricing for these CPUs, but like I said, hopefully they do offer a discount. And obviously that would be good news for gamers, given the fact that we usually have discrete GPUs, which ultimately cancel out the integrated GPUs. So there's really no reason to use it. And next, AMD also launched the Epic 4005 Embedded CPUs. And these are a little wild, because for one, they're on the AM5 socket, but also because these are made for edge deployment, they come with some interesting features like the fact that one actually has 3D vCache, and they also guarantee supply for at least seven years, which obviously guarantees consistent supply for a long period of time. Now, when it comes to the parts, you can see that we have quite a few here, the 4565P, the 4545P, 4465P, 4345P, 4245, then, the very odd 4585PX. This is, of course, the one with 3D vCache. Now, this goes from 6 cores and 12 threads all the way up to 16 cores and 32 threads with a base frequency of 4.3 gigahertz and a boost of 5.7 with, of course, a 170-watt TDP. Now, 
like I said, this one's pretty wild because according to this, this is of course the 3D Vcash variant. And it's a 16 core 32 thread with 128 megabytes of L3 cache. It'll definitely be interesting to see how well this performs in games. Either way, that is all the CPUs that AMD launched, but of course, it's a ton of them. Let me know which one you like down in the description below.